Thank you so much, and it's, a, it's an honor to join with you. Uh, and I know where your, your heart, your head, um, and your courage lie with regard uh, to this issue. And we applaud you for your efforts uh, with regard uh, to, the, uh, to the one caucus around this place who says that our goal and our mission is to make sure uh, that uh, uh, people who are poor today, uh, let us help them move out of that being poor. Let, the, let us help them move into the middle class because, in fact, they do want to work. They do want to take care of their families. They're not just statistics. And they are people to be upheld and respected and not to be vilified in so many ways as they are today. So I congratulate you and your efforts. I'm proud to be here with you tonight and with my colleague, Congressman uh, uh, Ellison and the Progressive Caucus for his comments and remarks. And I see that we are also joined by our colleague, uh, Mr. Johnson, uh, and thank you for your efforts uh, as well. And as you're talking about the high, what tonight is all about is highlighting severe immoral cuts that are made to anti-hunger and nutrition programs, particularly the food stamp program. And that is coming from the House of Representatives in the farm bill that it passed out of committee. Everyone knows millions of families are struggling in this economy. Across this country, nearly 15 percent of American households were food insecure in 2010. Nearly 50 million Americans, over 16 million children, are struggling with hunger right now. It is about children. It is about the disabled. It is about seniors. And this is a problem all across this land. My state of Connecticut, in my district, Connecticut statistically is the richest state in the nation because we have Fairfield County and some parts of the state that's known as the Gold Coast with very affluent people. But we have such pockets of hunger that in my district, one out of seven are food insecure. And I'm tired of the commentary on food insecurity. What that means, and my colleague knows this, we've talked about this, it is about being hungry. These folks, one out of seven, don't know where their next meal is coming from. And in Mississippi, 24.5 percent suffer food hardship, nearly one in four people. West Virginia and Kentucky, that jobs, drops to just over 22 percent, one in five. In Ohio, nearly 20 percent. California, just over 19 percent. The estimates of Americans at risk of going hungry here in this land of plenty are appalling. And at times such as this, our key federal food security programs become all the more important. This is especially true of food stamps, our country's most important effort to deal with hunger here at home and to ensure that American families can put food on the table for their kids. Right now, food stamps are helping over 47 million Americans, nearly half of them children, to meet their basic food needs. They make a tremendous difference for the health and the well-being of families, as our colleague Mr. Ellison pointed out with his examples. Food stamps have been proven to improve low-income children's health, their development, reduce food insecurity, and have a continuing positive influence into adulthood. And you know, I've always listened to people that talk about waste, fraud, abuse. Food stamps also has one of the lowest error rates of any government program. Go to the IRS, go to defense, Go to a crop insurance program and you'll find waste, fraud, and abuse. That food stamps are good for the economy. Economists agree that food stamps have a powerful, positive impact on economic growth. Last month, Bloomberg ran an article called, and I quote, Best Stimulus Package May Be Food Stamps because they get resources into the hands of families who are going to spend those dollars right away. And you know what, most importantly, food stamps are the right thing to do. Ninety-nine percent of food stamp recipients have incomes below the poverty line. And it is the job of good government to help vulnerable families get back on their feet. And in the words of Harry Truman, and I quote, nothing is more important in our national life than the welfare of our children and the proper nourishment comes first 
in attaining this welfare. You know, this is something that everyone in Washington used to agree on. In the past, there's been a strong tradition of bipartisanship on hunger and nutrition. From the left, leaders like George McGovern. From the right, leaders like Bob Dole. They came together. They made a difference for families who were in need. And over the past 30 years of policies that are aimed at debt and deficit reduction, the key programs that help the most vulnerable among us to get by have always been protected on a bipartisan basis by deep cuts. But the Farm Bill, coming out of the House right now, seeks to destroy that tradition. And in the name of deficit reduction, the bill slashes food stamps by more than $20 billion, hurting millions of Americans and our economy. They eliminate categorical eligibility. Their bill would force up to 2 million low-income Americans to go hungry. Their bill kicks 210,000 low-income children from the free school lunch program. It changes the relationship between SNAP and LIHEAP to take benefits from more low-income Americans and mostly seniors and working families with kids. Let's be clear, this has nothing to do with deficit reduction and everything to do with the ideological priorities of a House majority. And ever since the Speaker took the gavel, this majority has tried to slash through the most crucial threads of our American social safety net. The Ryan budget cut over $130 billion from food stamps, mostly by converting it to an inadequate block grant. Last year, when the House Ag Committee had to identify $33 billion in 10-year savings from the programs of their jurisdiction, they singled out food stamps for all of the cuts not direct payments, not crop insurance, just food stamps for the entire cut. It's a terrible policy. It will cause hunger and more health problems. The cuts are lopsided. It's a dereliction of our responsibility to the American people and of our moral responsibility. Let me quote the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops. They said last year, and I quote, we must form a circle of protection around the programs that serve the poor and the vulnerable in our nation and throughout the world. And as a Catholic leaders wrote last month, and again I quote, Congress should support access to adequate and nutritious food for those in need and oppose attempts to weaken or restructure these programs that would result in reduced benefits to hungry people. The House Farm Bill does the opposite. The cuts jeopardize the health and the well-being of America's families. It jeopardizes the growth and development of our children. It jeopardizes seniors, and it puts at risk those disabled Americans. Uh, in my district uh, yesterday, I went to the Cornerstone Christian Church in Milford, Connecticut. And the rep representatives there uh, were the woman who volunteers uh, in their food bank program, uh, Reverend Stackhouse of the Church of the Redeemer, uh, Lucy Nolan of N Hunger, Connecticut, Nancy Carrington, uh, who is the um, uh, Nancy, uh, who heads up the uh, Connecticut uh, Food Bank, and a young woman whose name was Penny. She had worked all of her adult life. She lost her job. She thought it was going to be easy to get another job and to be able to make her mortgage payments and all of the other financial obligations that she had. In the midst of this financial crisis, she and her husband separated, putting the burden of the family on her shoulders. She didn't know where to turn. She couldn't find, she didn't know how she was going to put food on the table. She went to the Connecticut Food Bank. They helped her to be able to access the uh, food stamp programs. And that's where she is now, still looking for a job, still wanting to work, still her pride enables her to continue to look for that job the courage of speaking before this group yesterday, 
and the press and to tell that stories of great courage like so many others are telling that stories, my colleagues tonight, we do have an obligation. These are not statistics that we're talking about. These are flesh and blood Americans who are looking for a bridge. They don't want to be there forever. They want to be able to take care of themselves and their families. It's the genius of the food stamp program was to say in times of need, we're there. And yes, we rise in the participation. When it gets better economically, those numbers drop. We have an obligation to those people, not to the statistics, but to those individuals who look to the federal government that says in the time of challenge, give me a little help. That's all I'm asking. I don't want everything. I know you don't have all those resources. Help me in this hour of need. That's what our moral responsibility is. Again, I say thank you to my colleagues for participating, for your steadfastness in, uh, in dealing with this issue.